Hello everyone and welcome to the Lathrom channel. In our videos we cover filming tips, tricks and techniques, equipment and product reviews, and many other things that will help you in the world of filmmaking and photography. Check out our videos and don't forget to subscribe. What's up everybody? Matt from Lathrom here. Thank you for tuning in as always. Glad to see you boys, girls, ladies and gentlemen back yet again. We're actually going to get into a little bit of 3D Studio Max in conjunction with HDR Light Studio 5. Kind of awesome. At least I think so. We'll get into some HDRing and all that other good jazz. Now, first and foremost, we'll go ahead and open up our HDR Light Studio 5 connection. Now, current render not valid. Hmm. Let's go into our render setup. We'll go ahead and change this bad boy. I don't know why it actually defaulted to default scan line renderer, but we're gonna change that to V-Ray. I'm going to leave all my settings at default for right now because that's actually inconsequential. Now, the second little red X that we have on here is current environment hook invalid. Well, let's take care of that. So either hit M on your keyboard or go up here to the little material editor and open up your tarot editor, obviously. Go ahead and click on one of your nice, wonderful uh, swatches here. Go ahead and click on Get Material. We're going to uh, all butt down here to V-Ray uh, under the maps, not under materials. But once we get down there, we're going to go ahead and click on V-Ray v -ray HDRI. Assign that to this little block. Go ahead and come over to our bitmap look up the parameters for this bad boy here I'm going to just use this warehouse with lights HDR go ahead and open that bad boy in the mapping we're going to change the mapping type from 3d studio max standard to spherical I'm actually not going to change the uh, horizon rotation or the ground projection information at this moment I'll leave that for later I am going to come down here to the cup space and change my inverse gamma to point 0.75 brings it down just a skosh that's all right by us we can always go in here and tweak these settings as needed move this over here we're also going to add a light so we're going to go up here to create and there's other ways that you could do it but we're going to go to create come down here to lights go to v-ray and create a dome light now that we got that dome light thrown onto our scene we're actually going to come down here, see where it says texture, little check mark, use texture, and then there's a box that says none. We're going to go ahead and drag this HDRI map into that box where it says none, click OK, leave it at an instance. I actually turn this up to 1024 instead of 512. If you want to play with the settings to see what is hip to you, by all means, feel free to do so. Now that we've gotten that done, we can go ahead and close out our material editor for right now. We're going to go ahead and refresh environment hooks. And it got rid of our little red X and replaced it with a green check mark. Okay, now that we've done all that, down here you have a start button. We're going to go ahead and open up HDR Light Studio from. 3D Studio Max. Now, as you can see here, it's showing a kettle or a teapot, but it's definitely not the one that we have in our scene. My bad, I'm getting ahead of myself. We have to do a little course correction here, and that means we're going to have to add a camera. I can't believe I forgot to add a camera. Physical camera, I'm going to drop that in there. Now that we've gotten our physical camera, what? Now that we've gotten our camera, I I usually tend to use actual physical cameras, but to each their own. Now I can actually go ahead and sync my render. Our wonderful scene has been brought straight into HDR Light Studio. Awesome sauce, is it not? Go ahead and put in a picture background. Change this. Oh, good lord, we're all over the place, aren't we? We rocked out the actual scene that we would be looking at inside of 3D Studio Max with that HDR 
HDRI image that I previously used in the uh, V-Ray 3.3 uh, video. This is what you're going to get. You have a, a few different things here. You have your illumination, you have your RAM, and you also have your reflection that you could choose. You could also add in some other good stuff. Either way, go ahead, play with it until you get something that you like. After you're all done with whatever you want to do down here, you know, make things look pretty, do what, you know, again, whatever it is you want to do, we're going to go down here and render the production HDRI. Uh, this is your preview here, mapping, 3ds Max, obviously, V-Ray has other options as well, such as iRay, Thea, Octane, Maxwell, Mental Ray, whatever floats your boat. We're going to leave the color well actually we're gonna do 2.2 on the gamma for the color space we're gonna export it as an EXR or an HDR either one it's up to you a little bit of personal preference there are pros and cons to each but I'm going to go ahead and do it as an HDR obviously you'll see there are some other uh, options that you have with an EXR I'm gonna go ahead and browse I'm gonna go ahead and save that bad boy out and Hit apply, hit render, let it go through and render itself, do its thing. It's actually not very long. Now that you're done with that, I can actually go through, minimize that. Now that I basically know that it was way too bright, I can actually come in here, go into my light, uh, go with lumens. I'll drag that down to about 35 lumens, give or take. Uh, let's do a real quick render here. And there you go. Fairly quick, simple, easy, communicates back and forth. And let me tell you, it's actually really, really nice whenever you're trying to do HDRI maps from like uh, a good way. Well, I, I don't want to say a good way, but an easy way for us to cheat, especially if we're outside or we're trying to integrate some CG into an area. We'll actually open up the iPhone, use, uh, I believe it's called Photosynth from Microsoft to essentially take, you know, a very large and stitched panoramic of everything floor ceiling walls everything you know left right up down the entire thing we could take it into HDR uh, light studio and you know let it do its thing hell of a lot easier than putting nine million lights in a scene and tweaking this and tweaking that and oh it still doesn't look right you can alleviate a lot of those problems Look into HDR Light Studio. I'll have the you know the description or the link in the description and, and all that other good jazz below. I believe if memory serves me correctly, it's about uh, I think four hundred and forty-five dollars for a one-year license. It's a, close to a thousand dollars for a permanent license. Um, if it's if you're a student, I think it's like fifteen pounds. So that's what about 30 bucks 40 bucks somewhere in that ballpark so by all means if you're a student definitely look into it uh, I'll also put the students link in the description below that way you can you know, see all the restrictions and all that other good stuff but that's about all I have uh, again thanks for tuning in if you have any questions concerns comments feel free to drop them in the comment box below do not forget to like share and subscribe and until next time I will see you guys later